Hi all and welcome back to my channel. This is Linda and I'm a healer, a coach and a facilitator. And in this channel, we talk about emotional intelligence and practical spirituality concepts and how you can use them in your day to day to create a more meaningful, joyful and fulfilling life. The topic of today is one that I've been very hesitant to do. I've considered it many times and um, I've been back and forth on it for a variety of reasons and we'll get into that as we go through the video. But the topic of today is the topic of twin flames, soulmates and karmics or karmic relationships. And what I will do in this video is I'm going to first go through each of these types of relationships and give you what my definition is of each of them. And then we'll talk a little bit about what the differences are. And depending on how I feel at the end of the video, I may give you a little bit of my experience with these. Um, and basically it is a really difficult subject for me to talk about because, um, I don't, there is a lot, a lot of controversy, I think in the spiritual field around the subject of twin flames. Normally, when you do any subject that includes the wording soulmates or, or you talk about any subject that includes the wording soulmates or twin flames, there's usually um, a lot of, I wouldn't say maybe controversy is not the right word, but a lot of energy around it because there's this belief that twin flame relationships are very, very negatively charged. So that is one of the reasons that I had some hesitation about doing this video. And also because I have in the past believed that I'm a part or I, well, not in the past, I do believe that I am part of a twin flame journey. So with that said, um, I want to be very clear that just like my, all of my other videos, and I don't know how often I say this, but just like my any of my other videos, the subjects that I talk about, um, I do give you a little bit of information about what the general meaning of some of the terminology is, but it's always infused with my own interpretation of what these concepts and these ideas mean based on what my own experience of them are. So there's, I don't think there's any subject that I've touched on in any of these videos that are not things that I have experienced myself most of them are things that I've actually all of them so far are things that I've gone through myself and therefore the definition that I may provide to you or my interpretation of what these concepts or these ideas are or how they work may differ from that of other uh, spiritual teachers or other people that talk about spirituality whether it's in YouTube or anywhere really because I, I genuinely and truly and very strongly believe that each of the each of us define and talk about things through our own filter, right? Which means based on our own very own experience. So that's what I try to do in this channel. So that, all that to say that if this doesn't resonate with you, or if you disagree with my definition of any of the terminology here, that's perfectly valid and feel free to put what your thoughts are about it in the comments. Um, I just want to be very clear that my, when it comes to this particular subject, this is all based on my own experience and how it feels to me and how I've lived it. So without further ado, so I think I want to be very um, specific in this video where I'm really going to talk about what the definitions are in these terms or how I interpreted definitions between these terms and what the differences are for me. So first, um, the reason why I did want to do this video and the one thing that I do have a little bit of um, maybe information that can be helpful to you on is the difference between these types of relationships. So the three topics, the three types of relationships that we're going to talk about here are karmic, soulmates and twin flames. And I feel like those three consistently get, uh, get conflated in the spiritual world or even the twin flame people that are in the twin flame journey, etc. And actually, it, never mind, in the day to day, those three get conflated very often because even um, for those of you who know me, I do this videos in English and Spanish and I'm going to do the Spanish video after this one. And that's going to be a little bit more difficult because the translation of soulmates 
in Spanish, that term, when you, the way that is translated into Spanish is closer, the, the way it sounds, it sounds closer to twin flames because it's actually twin souls is the actual literal translation. So again, uh, even without the language, um, variances, the terms do tend to get conflated a lot. So from my perspective, they are very different um, or well, different enough that you can differentiate between them. And I will start um, with karmic and my idea, my definition of a karmic relationship or a karmic connection is that um, these are people that we find in our day-to-day -day life with whom we have karma. Now, for those of you who are familiar with karma, and I have a video on that, and I think I've said in another video that even since then, my definition of karma has been, um, even has evolved. I'm not gonna get into that. If you're curious, you can go look up that video. I think it's called About Karma. But um, the idea for me, or the, or the real definition of a karmic relationship is someone, a person that comes into your life, or you come into their lives, or both uh, for a brief period of time. Usually my experience with karmic connections is short-lived. Now short-lived could mean five years or it could mean five days, right? But it's someone you have karma with. And I don't mean karma from the perspective of like, oh, you owe me something or you did something to me in another lifetime and you're gonna pay for it. This, I don't mean that, that's not how I define karma. What I mean is there is some unresolved energy that is happened or that still needs resolution between the two of you. Now, the fact that you come together in this lifetime doesn't mean that you will resolve it or complete it is actually a better word to use because there's not necessarily that it needs a resolution is that it needs completion so that the karma dissipates and it, once it's completed, it's done. There's not nothing else to do, right? So it, the fact that you come together in this lifetime doesn't mean that you will complete the cycle of karma, but it means that you have an opportunity to complete the cycle of karma. These types of relationships, because of that, tend to be very painful. There's and and there is a lot of um I don't what I don't know what the right word is, but there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of like um there's pain, but there's also like a lot of restless energy. I think is a really good word um, to use for it. And like I said, they tend to be short lived, but they also because of those two things, because they are short lived and because they have all of this energy and all of this pain, they give us a lot of opportunity for growth because that's what it what karma really is about is you know uh, action and consequence and it's balance and it's completion right the idea of this karmic relationship is that it's going to be able to you're going to be able to complete that karmic cycle which means that um it, you will learn the lessons you will have the growth the experience that you need to complete from this connection I will say that it is possible that there are karmic relationships out there that are not painful. Um, I, what I will say also is that I personally haven't experienced them and I haven't seen anybody around me experiencing them, experience them. Usually when I, the karmic relationships that I've seen are very painful. Now, arguably you could say any relationship is painful, right? There's pain points. There's always times where in any relationship, romantic or otherwise, there's going to be some sort of um, moments of pain, right? But the, the, the karmic um, connection is one that creates, there's a consistent um, way of emotion going back and forth where oftentimes you actually hurt each other it's not just the idea that there is pain but there's a lot of um in painful interactions between both of you, you one person hurts the other one hurts etc now um again the my experience with them and my interpretation of karmic relationships is that they really are intended to be short-lived and they are intended for growth and completion of the karmic cycle. 
A lot of times this manifests itself in romantic relationships, but not exclusively. I think people think of karmic and when you use, when you hear the term karmic in like spiritual circles, usually people are talking about romantic relationships or the romantic partner. They say, oh, they're karmic. They mean their romantic partner um, a lot of times, but they're not exclusively romantic. As a matter of fact, in my personal experience, one of the most um, common karmic relationships or karmic connections that I've seen is family, is parents and children. Um, I know for a fact that my relationship with my mother is karmic and it, there is a lot, it's basically any relationship that has that level of sort of intensity and pain and restlessness and energy associated with it that could be short, that is short term, but it is also, um, it is also uh, a potential, it has a lot of potential for growth and for completion of a cycle. Now, I do wanna go back for a moment and say that, you know, I did say there's short term and I was referring to my relationship with my mother as one that has, that is karmic. Um, the reason why I say that is because I also believe that my relationship with my mother, and this is a great segue, is also a soulmate relationship. Now, um, I'll get into how those connect in a moment, but it's a great segue for giving you my definition of a soulmate relationship. Now, a soulmate relationship is what a lot of spiritual teachers over the last year, I've heard them start calling them soul family. Actually, one of my spiritual, actually, both of my spiritual teachers call them soul family. And I think that's a much better uh, terminology to use. And the reason is, is because it is. Um, people think of soulmates as a romantic partner and they can be, but not always. So I view it as a group of souls that travel together, but also incarnate together. And my interpretation is that they are a vibrational match to each other, is a group of souls that actually have a, and that doesn't mean that their vibration is the same, what it means that it matches, whether it's a compliments, it amplifies, whatever the case may be, um, it is, they are a vibrational match to each other and therefore they travel together and they incarnate together. And their intent is to help each other. Um, and you could say help each other grow. And I mean, we're always growing, so yes. Um, but also what I wanna clarify, and this is how it ties back to karmic, is that a soulmate relationship could be, could have karma, could have incomplete or unresolved karma, in which case those two may overlap and could oftentimes karmic, or a lot of times, I, wouldn't, I don't know if often, but uh, enough times I've seen that a karmic relationship can is also a soulmate relationship. They become one and the same. Now they don't have to be, right? Because you don't have to, in, a, in from my, again, my interpretation, a soulmate relationship, a soul family relationship does not need to have unresolved or incomplete karma. It can, but it doesn't have to. So you will find people that have soulmate relationships where it could be like a friend or a sibling where yes, they may have, you know, in the 3D and their human interactions, they may have pain or difficulties or whatever, but there is no actual energetic karma to be completed. That has either, that has already been completed or closed down. And the relationship is one where they offer mutual support, mutual love to each other, that they encourage each other, that they help each other, etc. So soulmate relationships, the, the difference between karmic relationship and soulmate relationship, and again, both can be romantic or otherwise, right? Romantic, family, etc. is that karmic usually has an energetic charge of their is something that is incomplete, that is something that has not been fully resolved and closed out yet and or or out of balance and therefore they can be very painful emotionally speaking. Whereas soulmate relationships may have that or may not. They may be short term, they may be long term. They particularly soulmates is a word that is thrown around very much. And I've been hearing that word since I can remember, since I was a child, because like I said, it's very common, right? But um it never really quite fit for me. And I remember maybe 
I don't know, 20 years ago now, um, I was talking to one of my best friends, which we've been best friends for, I don't know, like oh, 25 years or more at this time. And we were talking and I remember saying, um, thinking and then saying to her eventually that I feel like she was a soulmate of mine. Now, the fact that you've had, I also want to clarify that the, the fact that you may have had multiple lifetimes with someone or lived uh, multiple lifetimes in, you know, in where you encounter the same person that does not necessarily make him a soulmate and that doesn't necessarily make him a twin flame that doesn't necessarily make him a karmic partner there has to be some level of vibrational connection between the two of you to fall into one of these three um types of relationships okay i i am a strong believer that pretty much um anybody we meet we've met almost at another time in another lifetime in another dimension in another reality whatever the case may be but not everybody has that um energetic connection with you now in the grander scheme of things we do right because if we if you believe in the concept of oneness at the end of the day we are all one but um i'm talking more in the lower dimensional levels where there's still a separation and in this case in the three and four d there's there's actually a physical separation between us i hope that's clear if it's not just ask in the comments and i'll try to clarify it or explain it a little bit better now that takes us to the twin flame relationship and to me, the twin flame relationship encompasses the other two. It is a little different, but it does encompass the other two because most people, um, when they meet their twin flame, there is a lot of karmic energy. And in my experience, I have yet to meet a twin flame uh, connection that is where the karma is complete. Now, I've not personally but i've i know some teachers that seem to have worked out the current their karma in this lifetime to the point that is either complete or almost complete but they actively worked it out in this lifetime so when they first came together in this lifetime their karma was still very very active and it still wasn't complete at a place of completion so i have not met anybody that comes together and um either is aware that they're twin flames or feels to me like they're twin flames and have um from the very beginning uh, resolved or completed karma usually it starts um they meet there's a lot of triggers all kinds of bells and whistles go off the level of intensity of the connection is oh my god i don't even know how i can <laughs> describe it i've had all three uh from my perspective and one of my first adult boyfriend you know sort of like more grown-up relationship in my 20s we had we definitely had a karmic relationship it was an incredibly volatile and intense relationship but it wasn't um it's just it's very hard to put into words it was very intense and it was painful but it wasn't deep gut-wrenching intensity uh there was um and it really didn't open open me up to anything it prepared me for other things but the difference is that when i found this person that i believe to be my twin flame the level of intensity and depth and profound pain and triggers and um intuition i mean my sense is it literally was almost like a short circuit like m as i got more and more into that connection my s literally blew out all of my circles and circuits and what happened is or what happens what i believe happens because it's from a lot of people that i know that believe to be in a tour or that know or believe to be in a twin plane journey which is what it's called um a lot of them will tell you myself included that it just opens you up completely like you start getting access to a lot of different gifts that you have you start getting access to a lot of trauma that you had i mean so it's the good the bad and the ugly and everything in between i mean it just opens you up in a way that is really really hard to describe um that a karmic relationship in my experience does not do now um 
the caveat, you know, the little sort of, there's a little bit of nuance there because there are also uh, relationships that are called catalysts, which are sort of very similar to twin flame energetically, but um, they actually are that, a catalyst, right? So they sort of open you up so that then your twin flame can come in and completely blast you open. I mean, I think it's a difference between like dynamite and an atomic bomb. I think it's the best way I can describe it. That sounds very dramatic, but it feels very dramatic. So, and I, if anybody that's watching me is in a twin flame journey, I think you'll understand what I mean. It's just like the level of intensity is just through the roof. And it's also, it can be very confusing because a lot of times you don't understand what's happening happening in my particular case and i know the case of a couple of people that i know the connection the actual tangible physical connection that i had with the person was in commensurate to the amount of pain that i and trauma and triggers that i was experiencing from just even getting like meeting this person so um so i think that is one of the very key components of um of uh, twin flame relationships is that is uh, the level of intensity is just through the roof it is they also can be very 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 painful like excruciatingly painful um, but they also give you the most opportunity for expansion. So with that said, along the way, you know, through all my spiritual journey, I had, well, I guess I am going to talk about this, <laughs> about my personal experience. I wasn't sure, but clearly I am. So there we go. Anyways, um, so I think I didn't come across the term twin flames until quite a few years ago when I went through, um, I do. I don't want to say a relationship because it was in a relationship, but a connection with someone that was so intense and so deep and so completely all-encompassing and overwhelming that it rocked my world in a way that nothing ever, nothing else ever had. Even my closest friend didn't even recognize me. Like she was like, "What is happening to you? I've never seen you like this." So that was um, the first time that I came across the term twin flames because I was actually started looking online because this was just so intense and it opened up so many things for me, good and bad, and I just didn't know what to do with it. So I started looking for what this could be and it's the first time, like I said, that I came across the term twin flames. I didn't really know what it was, but I started looking more into it and I got a little bit more information and it felt like it may be, but I wasn't really sure. Cut to a few years later, I that uh, connection, you know, um, didn't pan out. It didn't turn into a relationship. It was a very, very painful time of my life. And it is actually, um, I think I have, I wrote a chapter on a book and the chapter is called The Gift. And the reason why it's called The Gift is because um, I talk about that, that connection. And again, I'm not going to go into the gory details of it, but basically what I will say is that it was one of the most painful, actually, the most painful experience of my life and and i've been around you know i'm no spring chicken <laughs> i'm not a, you know a teenager so um but it was the most painful and gut-wrenching experience of my life and at the same time it's the experience that opened me up completely to this journey that i'm now on so i call it the gift because no matter what happened and how painful that was and what the um circumstances of our separation if you want to call it that were um it opened me up to a world of possibilities that i never knew it exist existed so um in any case um i digress going back to what we were talking about a second ago i will say that that was the first time that i heard the term twin flame and i did think it applied but i was never really quite sure and then years went by i healed i learned a lot from that experience and i moved on and then i um met someone else with whom i've had just about as intense a connection as i had with that other person and what is interested is inter very interesting is that in the meantime there was quite a few years in between those two i believe maybe like 
seven years, eh, no, about, I don't know, whatever, between five and seven years. I can't, I can't do math as I'm looking into the camera. <laughs> but um, it, it was quite a few years. And when that other second uh, connection, because also was in a relationship connection came about, Throughout all of those years, I had completely forgotten about the subject of twin flames or I've never really thought about soulmates or anything like that. I const consistently and very regularly think about this man, um, this man that started my awakening, you know, my gift, because um, he is, even though I haven't seen him in ages, he changed so much within me that I always have him with me and my connection with him is still in my heart. I don't think that's ever going to go away. I remember him very fondly and um and I a lot of times I hope and wish that I would run into him uh so I could say thank you. I don't know if he'd even understand what I mean by saying thank you, but I always um thought about running into him and being able to say thank you because he really did change my life. In any case, um, the second connection um, came across, and I that I came across, I had all it was very unexpected, and I had all of these intense feelings, almost with the same intensity as that, as that first connection, and I had completely, even as that connection started, I hadn't not even remembered about the term twin flames it wasn't until months and months later that i was watching a video where that term came up and all of a sudden i was like oh crap wait a minute so that was really when i started digging more this was maybe a couple of years ago um i started digging more and more and more into twin flames and i realized that it is very possible that this second connection was a twin flame i now believe that the first person that i met on this journey was in fact that created all of that um pain in me uh, that i was mentioning before that I, if i run into him i'd love to say thank you was a catalyst and the person that I met after may potentially be the twin flame. I'm not really sure about that, and I and I and I'm being very honest because while it feels like that, I do have moments of doubt, moments where I say, "Well, this cannot be. It's not possible." Um, so I, I just want to be very transparent about that. Most of the time, it does feel that way. Um, but what I will say is that both of these relationships, the catalyst and the twin flame, the amount of expansion that I've received or that I've gone through because of both of those, and I will call them connections again. They're not really relationships because nothing ever, there wasn't a relationship there. It was just a connection. Um, the amount of expansion is just I can't even like I am a completely different person and I refer to the first one the catalyst as he is my before and after in my life like this is like the person that completely and utterly as a result of how much pain I was I completely change and in some ways I'm still who I was very deep in my core but I changed my life I changed the way I navigate the world and the way that I navigate my life and it's what actually started me in this healing journey. Now, this other connection, which is the one that I believe is my twin flame connection, when it came, I came across, it was also very painful. I still do have some quite, um, quite a few painful days um, as a result of that. Um, I've, I also have the benefit of having been on this self, uh, this healing and this self, um, self-development journey for long enough that I can harness that and harness all of that emotion and use it and probe it and look and dive in to see what is the benefit there, what is the lesson there, what it is that I need to get from it. So that's probably why it hasn't been as painful. But the first one, the catalyst awoke me and this one just expanded me beyond anything that I could possibly imagine. So I was already awake, I was already on my journey, and then this happened, and a world of possibilities opened up for me that I didn't even know was possible, including doing this work. This is something that people have been telling me for quite some time that I should do, and I just was very, I just like, that's not for me, I don't wanna do this, and all of a sudden, I met this person, and I was in so much pain, and so much expansion happened, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing this, and then literally from, like, within a couple of days, 
I've decided that I was going to start the YouTube channel and that I was going to move and that I was going to uh, quit, you know, stop working in corporate America and, you know, do this type of work. So it's it sort of like the catalyst opened me up and then this just blew me open. Again, same analogy or same uh, metaphor that I used before, the difference between dynamite and like an atomic bomb. So that is how I differentiate all three. Uh, again, the twin flame, it's potentially, well, in my experience is by far the most painful. It is also the most, gives you the most potential for expansion. And ultimately it is up to you if you decide to take that potential and do something with it. Now the twin flame relationship is probably one of the biggest mirrors, if not the biggest mirror that you will encounter is the type of re relationship that's going to reflect back to you pretty much every deep core wound that you have. Well, not every, but at least the biggest ones, the biggest, deepest wounds that you have, that relationship will mirror the back to you and will trigger them. So um, I think that is also another way to differentiate. Now I've had, I personally have some uh, core wounds of abandonment um, as well as others, but abandonment is one of my primary ones. And while it's been triggered before, it the extent to which it was triggered during the catalyst uh, connection and for this uh, twin flame connection is really unprecedented for me in my life. And I've had a lot of situations related to abandonment that have been really painful for me in adulthood, but the, these two in particular were just completely, I mean, the volume is just turn off, turn on considerably. I mean, like literally through the roof. So I think that's another thing that is very characteristic of a twin flame relationship. I also want to jump in, in here and say a couple of things. Now I want to make a point here because I think it's very important for us to differentiate between these types of relationships and unhealthy relationships or uh, relationships that are abusive, codependent, etc. And it is an important uh, skill that we need to develop to learn how to differentiate. And the reason why I say that is because um, karmic, twin flame, and sometimes even soulmate relationships a lot like abusive or unhealthy 3D relationships are, uh, you know, create dynamics or we, we engage in dynamics that are related to our wounding, you know, our core wounds, our own childhood trauma in this life, and even karmic trauma as well. So um, the, the energy behind it can feel similar to some degree. So um, the best way that I can describe is that in both relationships, right? For example, say a karmic or a twin flame relationship, as well as an abusive relationship, your emotions are going to be triggered maybe in the same type of scenarios, right? If you have a core wound, like I said, for myself of abandonment, if the other person walks away or doesn't talk to you for a few days, you may get very triggered how we navigate them and how we behave and how we manage them is what makes a difference, right? So any relationship that is abusive in any way, physical, emotional, psychological, uh, mental, is is unhealthy um codependent relationships as well so i think what is really important is that we need to understand that in order for any of these relationships be it soulmate karmic or twin flames to actually um expand us to the extent that they are intended to and um for us to harness their power um, we really need to work on our issues. We need to work on our trauma. We need to work on ourselves, basically. So it's really important that we are clear that just because someone is your twin flame or your karmic partner, if you deem, deem them or believe them to be so, doesn't mean that, oh, you know, they're my twin flame, so, and I know they're abusing me, but they're my twin flame, right? It, it's, that's not what is intended. Th that's not what the intent 
intent of those relationships are. They're intended to help you grow and expand and come to a place of union within yourself, a place of self-love, a place of expansion, of growth, etc. Okay, so I think that's really important because that is something that I find that gets um, really confused in a lot of the communities that deal with these subjects, specifically with the twin frame, twin flame relationship community. And the last point that I want to make about twin flame connections is that because of that identical vibrational frequency, because of this karmic energy, they really are the intent and the purpose of these relationships is to expand us and open us up completely so that we can come into alignment with that divine expression that we are. And it is really, even if you don't believe in the concept of twin flames or you're kind of hesitant about it, it really doesn't matter ultimately, right? Because it's all, um, we're putting labels on it, right? The idea that what is important about this, the idea of this specific relationship or this specific connection is that the intent of the depth of that connection, of that reflection and all of that pain and all of that karmic energy is to really again expand you and open you up so that you can align with your divine expression so in summary what i'd like to say is that these three types of relationships are can oftentimes get conflated like i said at the beginning and they are similar enough that i can it's easy to understand why but there are some key differences and again the karmic relationships tend to be more short term and they are usually sometimes oftentimes very um, tumultuous or have some level of energy of conflict it's karmically charged meaning that there is um resolution or completion of the karmic balance that is still needed within these two people that needs to be completed um in other words that needs to be resolved um the soulmate relationship is a relationship that tends to be more longer term not always but tends to be more longer term and it can be um with a relationship where there is karma to be completed and it can also be a relationship where there is not any karma to be completed right that is just a relationship that is mutually beneficial from the perspective of it's just to provide each other with support love um uh, knowledge wisdom whatever the case may be now both of these all of these relations excuse me both of these two relationships karmic and soulmate relationships uh can be with romantic partners as well as family members boss employees friends etc you could really have either of these with anybody from my specific perspective a twin flame relationship is a romantic relationship and will be or a romantic connection i'll say that a romantic connection um and it is a little different in that it does include karmic it does include soulmate but then it is so much more because it gives you the most the biggest capacity for expansion because it also is the strongest, biggest mirror that you are going to find. And in addition to that, the intensity of the connection is oftentimes completely unparalleled by anything else. So that's basically the differences as I view them between these three. And I could not tell you what made me decide to do this video right now. Like I said at the beginning, I've been debating, well, not debating, but I had it on my list of subjects to talk about. And I've sort of kind of shied away from it and stayed away from it and kind of wasn't feeling like I really wanted to do it at all. Um, consider a couple times, backed out, and all of a sudden today, I just woke up and I had plan to do something else and I woke up and I was like no nope, I'm doing it today so I just don't argue with my intuition I just do um when something comes like that just so easily to me a decision that I usually follow it because it is an intuitive hit and I am hoping and I'm um, guessing that is probably going to be helpful or useful to at least one of you guys out there so with that thank you again for your attention and as always until next time Namaste.